All right, so uh, I've been doing these unordered tetrad problems in my genetics class, uh, and a lot of students have kind of had trouble with these. So the goal of these tetrad problems are to determine the order of the genes and the distances between them. Usually we work with three genes. Um, I'm not going to get too much into the theory, but, you know, uh, unordered tetrad problems are usually based on uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, or, you know, yeast. Uh, and when they produce, uh, when they go th when their diploid cells go through meiosis, all four products of meiosis are kind of kept in the same sac. So you can um, really narrow down gene distances in a, in a more efficient way because they are held together. We call them tetrads, being there's four cells uh, that are linked together. But they're unordered because they're just kind of um, randomly distributed in this one sac. So the strategy for sol solving these types of problems is first determine the parental type for all the genes. I'm going to go through these. Um, and then pick two genes, assign the uh, property PD, MPD, TT for each group, determine if the two genes are linked um, using this property here. If they are not, determine the map distance between the two genes, uh, and then you go back and do two more genes. If you have three genes total, you're going to be doing three pairs. Um, so I kind of have like a solved problem here that I give as an example with all the distances between the genes. But the goal in this case here is to solve a problem that has not been done. All right, so first we want to determine parental type. Parental type is the one with the most counts. I usually just kind of like to take it here and color it uh, like yellow or something like that so we know the difference. All right, so the genes here we're looking at are D, E, and F. Wild type being a plus, a mutant type being the letter. Uh, so we're going to look at D and E first. So to do that, I'm going to cover up the F gene. I find this is a good strategy so it doesn't confuse myself, uh, I think, as students as well. All right, so we've covered up the F gene, so we can only see the E gene. So our parental types are the ones here, plus, 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 DE, DE. So any time we see that, we will call that a parental type. Uh, by definition, parental type will be parental type for all gene pairs. All right, let's look at two. We have plus, plus, plus E, D plus, DE. I hope you can see that these are two are different, and... There are four different types. Whenever there's four different types, we call that tetra type. So let's look at the next line. Plus, plus, plus E, D, plus, D, E. Also four different types, so tetra type. Uh, now we have plus, 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 D, E, D, E. That's the same as the parental type. You can see exactly the same. Two pairs of double pluses, two pairs of D, E. We call that parental type. Now here we have plus E plus E, D plus, D plus. So there's only two different types, plus E and D plus, and they are different than the parental type. So that is non-parental die type. Uh, furthermore, the same for number six. Okay, so we got that. Now let's look at the D and the F gene. Since I'm looking at D and F, I will cover up E. Now the thing's changed here. Parental type, still parental type. But now we can see top row and second row are exactly the same. So this one turn from a tetra type to parental type. Number three, plus 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 F, D plus D, F. That is also still four different kinds or tetra type. Uh, plus F, plus F, D plus D plus. You can see that is different than the main one, non parental die type. Um, plus plus, plus plus, D, F, D, F. That's exactly the same as the parental type. You can see these are changing from one group to the next, and then we also have non-parental die type. So. All right. All right, so we did D and F genes. Now let's move on to E and F. Do, 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 do. All right. Oops, sorry, wrong direction. Do, 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 do. Now we're covering up the D genes because we're only interested in the E and F. Okay, so again, this is parental, plus, 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 EF, EF. You can see here we have four different types. Um, the next one is plus, 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 EF. These are unordered, so uh, these three and one are the same, even because they're the same. They're out of order, but these are unordered tetrads, so it is still parental type. Here we have plus F, plus F, E plus, E plus. That is not one of the parental types, so that would be non-parental type. There's only two. Um, same thing with the next line. You can see they're in a different order, but they're still non-parental die type. And the last one is EF, EF, plus, 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 plus. These are unordered, uh, but it is the exact same as the parental die type. So 
now that I've characterized all these, uh, I can then use the formula um, here, 3 MPD plus half TT divided by the total to calculate the gene distances. Uh, right now, I'm just going to focus in on the categorization, so I'll leave that as an exercise to you. But you can see calculating the distance between each, each gene will be adding up different numbers. All right, so let's just do one more. Um, I'm going to cover up the I gene here. I guess it's maybe easier to drag. Okay, I don't know why the TT is there. I just copied it wrong. Um, all right, so here we have G and H. Which one has our parental type? Oh, this one here has the most counts. It doesn't have the, the parental type could be in any row. All right, so here we have our parental type. I'm just going to put that in for all three gene pairs. Okay. All right, plus, whenever you have two pluses and two letters for GH, you have parental type. So two pluses, two letters. Here we have four different ones. Here again, we have four different um, tetrads. Here we have plus H and G plus. That is different than the parental type, but there's still only two. And that one as well. All right, so we've categorized G and H. So we want to do G and I. I need to move my bars over to cover up the H gene because otherwise I get easily confused. All right, so this is still parental type. Notice our parental type has changed. It is now not two pluses together. It is now an I and a plus and a G and a plus. This depends on the arrangement of the genes. So here in one, we have plus, 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 G, I, G, I. But that is different than our parental type. So that is a non-parental ditype. Uh, here in three, I'm seeing four different types. Uh, here in four, I am seeing the exact same as a parental. A letter and a plus and a letter and a plus. Uh, there's only two types. Five is the same as row one, so it's non-parental. Two pluses and two letters. Uh, row six, plus I, plus I, G, plus G, plus. That is exactly the same as our parental type. So the parental type tells us what the other types uh, will look like. Tetratypes are pretty easy to isolate because there's four different ones. All right, last column. Covering up the G. All right, so our parental type is now, again, a letter and a plus. Right, and then the first row again is non-parental die type. So. Second one, uh, it's out of order, it's shuffled, but it is the same as the parental type. The third, fourth one, uh, I'm seeing plus I, H I plus plus H plus. Those are four different types. Tetra type. Uh, it is out of order compared to number two, but it is also parental type. Uh, then row six is H I H I plus plus. This is the opposite of the parental type, so it's non-parental type. Okay, so that is our collection of tetrads assigned. Now that you've assigned them, all you need to do is take those distances, plug them into the formula, and away you go. Thanks.